Hey everybody, Joe here from Speedway Motors and today we're joined by Troy Green from Maxima Racing Oils and we're going to talk about braking oil. And so the first question is, what is a braking oil? So braking oil is going to be a petroleum based oil that is specifically formulated for the break-in process of a new engine. It's something that we everybody should be using in a brand new build. So any engine, any fresh engine, regardless? 100% I would recommend using a break-in oil in it, yes. And what is it about the break-in oil that makes it a necessity? So that's a good question. Um, everybody wants to know what actually makes a break-in oil a break-in oil. So when we start off with a break-in oil, we start off with a petroleum-based base oil, just like we use in any of our other petroleum-based oils. So, so the base oil is always going to be, in, in the maximum break-in oil, it's going to be a very good base oil. It's going to be very stable and be a very good oil. From there, the additive package is what really determines whether that oil turns into a regular oil or it turns into a break-in oil. And at that point, what we've done is we've elevated the levels of zinc, we've lowered the levels of detergent, uh, dispersants are raised a little bit because what we want to do is we want to build we want to build that first salt layer on our journals uh, so that's going to come from the come from the zinc um, so we want that extra zinc in there but we also don't want so much zinc that we're going to have fallout before we where we're going to end up with the zinc in the, in the bottom of the oil pan so you really want a balanced formula uh, when you're using a break-in oil maxima is always going to be a very balanced formula um, then we want to lower those detergents because we don't want to wash that we don't want to wash that zinc back off of those journals, uh, rod journals, main journals, all the all of our camshaft surfaces. We don't want to wash that zinc layer back off with a higher level of detergents. So what we're going to do is lower those. Dispersants are going to get increased a little bit because we want to capture all of that stuff that's going to be coming out of a new engine. Everything that comes off the skirt of the piston, everything that's going to come off of the camshaft during the break-in process, uh, what we're going to get off the cylinder walls and off the rings. What we need to be able to do is capture that in the oil and get it filtered out before it gets back into the engine. So that's one of the reasons that we really kind of focus on dispersants in a break-in oil is to keep all of those particles suspended so that we can filter them out and keep that engine clean through the break-in process. So what is it about the zinc that is so critical in a fresh engine? So that's the key point right there because what we need to do is get those parts of the engine up to temperature to where they will accept that zinc. So the zinc is actually going to build a layer on that journal surface. So if we're talking about a, a rod journal or a main journal, or if we're talking about a, a bearing surface on a camshaft, what the zinc is actually going to do is going to build a layer. So in the event that we have an oil pump failure, or for some reason we have um, a lack of oil going through the engine, now we are going to end up with metal to metal contact. We can't control that anymore when we don't have pressurized oil going yeah. through the engine. So what we want to do is to minimize the damage that's going to happen from that metal to metal contact. That's what the zinc will do. The zinc will keep those two, two surfaces, um, it'll keep them from welding together basically. Uh, so what we want is those two surfaces to slide across each other and not grab each other. So that's one of the things that zinc is going to do for us is keep those surfaces to where those two metal parts can touch each other but not weld together. And even if everything is functioning normally and there's no failure on like a flat tap at camshaft, that's essentially what you have is metal to metal you do, contact. You do. Right? It's called boundary boundary surface lubrication. So what we do is we have those items that are touching each other. They are always going to be touching each other. So that boundary in there of that fortified zinc oil is what's going to keep those two items alive and not let them weld to each other or dig into each other and, and cause a failure. So there are those who think that you can just pour whatever your favorite oil is in your crankcase mm -hmm. and then put an additive in. And then in. put an additive in. So that, that, is, that, is a, that is a pretty detrimental deal. You'll, you'll find that Maxima does not offer any additives whatsoever. We think it's, it's a little bit gimmicky in our opinion uh, because we want all the good stuff in this bottle. We don't want you to play chemist. We don't want you responsible for putting the right amount of something in your oil. That's not your responsibility. That's, if you want to do it, that's fine. But what we feel like is best is to give you a product that is prepackaged, ready to go in an engine, that you don't have to do anything to. There's no additive to it. Um, if, we, if, we're, if we're talking about an oil that we're not familiar with, how many parts per million of zinc is in it, and now we add a bottle of zinc to it, well, too much zinc is detrimental because the oil can only suspend so much zinc. Once that zinc starts falling out into the oil pan, well, now the oil pump's going to pick it up. It's going to get pushed through the engine. It can be a little bit abrasive. It can also stop up oil filters. Um, you'll find it a lot of times when you pull the valve cover or something off, you'll see some black 
in the ends of the valve cover where the oil is drained, well, typically that black is extra zinc that the oil could not keep in suspension anymore. So, um, so by adding um, a bottle of zinc to our oil, thinking that we're making a break-in oil, is really not a very good idea because if we don't know if we don't know if the oil, oil is going to be able to keep it suspended, then it's really going to be, it could be coming a real, real issue. And you also talk about the different levels of detergents and dispersants. Yes, correct. So day. those are the other things that, um, you know, in a conventional oil, um, detergents are going to be a little bit higher um, because we're going through normal use and everything else, um, which is going to be a little detrimental to the, to the zinc in the oil. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's extremely important to run what is considered a true break-in oil. Um, one of the other things that we that I hear a lot on our break-in oil is how dirty it looks. Like it really scares some people when they, you know, drop their oil pan or drain the oil out and they see how dirty it is. They're really concerned and they're, but that's what we want a break-in oil to do. We don't want a break-in oil to come out looking good. We want it to come out looking dirty and nasty and full of all of the stuff that you know, that the engine produced while it was in its break-in process. We want the oil to capture all of that so that it can either get filtered or drained back out when the time comes to put conventional oil back in the engine. What about viscosity? Is there a difference in the viscosity you should look for in a break-in oil versus what you're gonna run? In my opinion, yes. Um, one of the things that we need to look for is, in a, on a hydraulic lifter engine, 1550 is a little bit tough to push through those hydraulic lifters and keep them pumped up. So as long as your bearing clearance is supported and everything else, we always recommend using our 10, 10W30 in a hydraulic lifter engine. Uh, the lifters stay pumped up better, we get better oil flow through the lifters, and it just performs better with a 10W30. Any flat tappet or roller, solid roller engine, uh, the 15, 1550 works really well as long as your bearing clearances support that weight. So what about how long do you keep the break-in oil in the engine? So it really kind of depends on what you're, what you're going to do with the engine. So let's just say that we're going to put it on an engine dyno and we're going to make an average, let's just say we're going to make 10 dyno pulls on it. Um, if we have a, if this is a, a circle track engine that's going to go, it's going to go to the track on Friday night, I typically, as long as the dyno session went well and there was nothing, no issues, no overfueling or anything like that, and the oil is still in good shape, I recommend going ahead and racing, racing at least one night on that break-in oil. Same with the drag race engine. I'd want you to go race one night after a dyno session. If we didn't dyno the engine, then go race a full weekend on it. Um, passenger car type stuff, around 500 miles. Um, even if we dyno the engine, let's go for about 500 miles on the, on the break-in oil. And once again, you're gonna find some other products that, that won't last that long because they use an inferior base oil so, like I said in the beginning, the Maxima break-in oil does use a very good base oil, so it's very stable, and you won't have any problem getting 500 miles out of it or a weekend worth of racing after a dyno session on our break-in oil. Is there anything that you need to be aware of if you're going to go from the conventional break-in oil to a synthetic? No, you could, once you've got the break-in process done with the petroleum-based break-in, it's fine to go straight to a full synthetic oil after that. So what about diesel oil as a break-in oil? You know, that's kind of an old school thing. A absolutely, yeah, we see that a lot and we still see it a lot. We have a lot of uh, a lot of people ask us all the time, why not just use a diesel oil? Well, let's look at diesel oil and, and where it comes from. Uh, so the places that most of that oil is being sold, let's talk about Rotella because that's gonna be one of the most popular ones that everybody is talking about. Uh, so that's gonna come off of the shelf at some of our big box stores where they can't have an oil like ours that doesn't have an API label. So that API label is basically gonna be handcuffs. Um, they're only allowed to put a certain amount of zinc, a certain amount of phosphorus, all of these beneficial products that are in a good oil, uh, these companies are not able to do because of that, because of that label that's on, on that bottle. Um, it's like, like I said, it's basically a handcuff. Um, and beyond that, the chemistry of a diesel oil really is so much different than a gasoline oil because of the demands that it goes through. Diesel engines are low speed engines. Um, you know, a high RPM diesel engine is what, 2500 RPM or whatever? 
So one of the things we don't have an issue with in diesel oil is foaming the oil because of excess of RPM. Um, so if we put this in a gasoline engine and we put it on a dyno and we're going to turn at 8,000 or 8,500 RPM, that oil is not meant to be turned at that kind of RPM and whipped up like that. So you're going to have a lot of aeration in that oil. It cannot disperse the air back out of it like it should. That's one of the things that we do here very well is a anti-foam package that is going to keep that air out of the oil at higher RPM versus the diesel oil. That's just one of the reasons not to use the diesel oil for break-in. Well, and there's a lot of detergents in diesel, too. Very high in detergents because of the nature of a diesel engine and how dirty they are. So once again, we talked about higher detergent levels being detrimental in a, in a break-in oil. Um, it works almost just the opposite of what we want in a true gasoline break-in oil. So always use something that says break-in oil. I would always use a break-in oil in a brand new build. Troy, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for watching.